Static friction is a reaction force that can have a maximum value of mu sub s, the static friction coefficient, times the normal force n. What this means is that the static friction is not necessarily mu times n. That's only the maximum value it can take when the external forces cause the reaction force to exist. This is in contrast to the kinetic friction, which is always the dynamic or kinetic friction coefficient, mu sub k, times the normal n. Misunderstanding this maximum value for static friction can often cause problems while solving static friction problems. For a box on a horizontal surface, the friction force is zero if no external horizontal force is being applied. As soon as an external force appears, if the box is still static, it means that a reaction friction force with opposite direction to the external force has the same magnitude of that external force. The external force can keep increasing until the friction force reaches a value of mu s times n, where n is of course the normal force equal to mg. When the external force is higher than this, the friction force cannot increase anymore and therefore the box will be subjected to a horizontal acceleration. This is similar to what happens to a box on a slope. If the inclination angle is not too steep, the friction force will only be equal to the external force parallel to the surface. For any case of a box on a slope, this external force parallel to the surface is the component of the weight in the direction of the surface. If this force is lower than mu times n, then the friction force is only equal to the magnitude of the weight's component. Mu n is only the maximum friction force. If the actual friction force was mu times n, then the box would be accelerating upwards, which is obviously not the case. Of course, if we keep increasing the angle of the slope, we will reach a point where the friction force will reach its maximum value at mu times n, and we can actually write the sum of forces in the y prime direction and the sum of forces in the x prime direction to find the relationship between the angle and the static friction coefficient mu sub s. The fact that any friction force has a range from zero to its maximum value mu n, or better yet, in either direction, can result in problems where the answer is not a specific value but a range of values. If, for example, the box was connected to another hanging box through a pulley, finding the mass of the hanging box for equilibrium would not just be a specific single value. This is a consequence of the friction force being anything from zero to the max value of mu n in either direction. The minimum value of the mass of the hanging box would be when the friction force is pointing upward and equal to mu n. In this case, both the weight of the hanging box and the friction are opposing the component of the weight of the first box in the direction of the surface x prime. The maximum value for the mass of the hanging box would be when the friction force is pointing downward and equal to mu n. In this case, the weight of the hanging box would be opposed by the friction and the component of the weight of the first box in the direction of the surface. With these max and min values, we define a range for the mass of the hanging box for which the system is in equilibrium. This is only possible precisely because of the nature of the static friction forces adapting to the external loads and increasing to their maximum value of mu n. Therefore, the general equation for static friction is really an inequality, with f sub s being less than or equal to mu sub s times n. This maximum value is still useful to find the value of external forces such as those required for sliding one object over another object on top of a surface, or two for finding the value of the external force required to tip over a solid structure. So far, with the box examples, the boxes themselves could as easily just be points with no volume or area in this 2D examples. But when we have an object that actually occupies space, Tipping it comes into play when an external load is trying to make it slide. For example, let's look at a couple of stacked boxes to look at these two situations, sliding and tipping. The friction coefficient is 0.28 between the bottom of the box and the floor. And the friction coefficient is 0.52 between the boxes. If we apply a horizontal force 100 millimeters from the floor, increasing from 0 newtons, what will happen to the boxes? Will the top box slide over the bottom box? Will both boxes slide over the floor? Or will the stack tip over? 
we can answer this general question if we calculate the required force for each scenario. If we are expecting the top box to slide over the bottom box, the free body diagram of that box only will allow us to write a sum of forces in Y to find the normal reaction force and the sum of forces in X to find the force F. If we are expecting the top box not to slide over the bottom one but have both slide over the floor, a free body diagram of the entire stack would show us the weight of the boxes going down, the normal to that weight going up, and the friction force opposing the external load. The sum of forces in both directions allows us to find the force required to push both boxes to slide over the floor. Since this force is higher than the previous case, as soon as the force reaches 338 newtons, the top box will slide, accelerate, and fall. Therefore, the whole stack won't slide over the floor. Finally, the tipping of the structure, and this analysis will always be the same, so this is applicable for any scenario, not just this simple example, will depend on the moment about the point that would not move under a tipping situation. In this case, if the force is pushing from the left, the point of rotation would be the bottom right corner A. To find the force required for tipping the structure over, we would write a sum of moments about A before the rotation begins as an inequality. F is located at 100 millimeters, making it rotate clockwise, and the two weights are located at half the width at 30 millimeters and the force 2W is generating a counterclockwise rotation. Since we're finding F for the stack of boxes to tip and rotate clockwise, this sum of moments should be less than zero. Solving for F, we find a force that is even larger than the other two we found before. This means that the top box slides over the bottom box first, and this answers our question. When a horizontal force of 338 newtons is applied 100 millimeters from the floor, the first thing that will happen is that the box on top slides over the box at the bottom. By the time the force reaches 364 for the whole stack to slide, or 390 newtons for the stack to tip over, the top box will have already slid. Let's take a look at a simple friction example, and if you want to check out more complex examples, make sure to check out the two-minute example videos linked in the description below. A man that has a weight of 200 pounds pushes horizontally on the crate. If the coefficient of static friction between the 450-pound crate and the floor is 0.3, and between his shoes and the floor is 0.6, would the man be able to move the crate? Will the crate slide or tip over? Remember to try to solve this problem on your own before you watch the solution up next. If we draw free body diagrams for both the crate and the man, we see that the maximum force that the man can exert on the box will be equal to that maximum value of friction we discussed at the beginning of this video. With the normal being 200 pounds, the friction force would be 0.6 times 200, and therefore the maximum force P would be 120 pounds. On the other hand, the crate's free body diagram shows us that the normal is 450 pounds and that the maximum friction force is 0.3 times 450 or 135 pounds. Since P can only reach 120 pounds, the friction force could be higher than that and therefore the man would start sliding before the crate slides the actual friction force on the crate would still be 120, and the crate would be under equilibrium. For tipping the crate, a sum of moments about the bottom left corner A would show us that the box would rotate clockwise, not counterclockwise, which is tipping over. Of course, this doesn't mean that the crate will in fact rotate clockwise. It only means that the normal force from the floor to the crate is not located at A, but around the center of the crate, which would create an additional moment to result in a sum of moments of zero. This moment caused by the normal force means that the crate will not tip over, as there is still an interaction between the floor and the crate. Therefore, the overall answer to this question is that the man cannot push hard enough to either slide or tip over the crate. The links to the other 2-minute example videos on friction, as well as the 10-minute videos from the aesthetics course, are linked in the description below, so make sure to check those out. Thanks for watching.